A horse's natural instinct is to run away from threats. Threats like the stench of blood on the battlefield, the sight of bodies on the ground, the noise of weapons on shields, the clatter of armour, the shininess of armour. So how do we get a horse used to that? Well, the answer is training. I've got a few ideas. Let's have a look at how I think the training might have been done. Yeah, Mum. Good boy. So, Ghost is in quite a frightened mood, so I've got to um, take that into account when I'm training him. So, I have here something that's going to make a noise shortly, and he seems okay about it. So, here's how you would start training a horse. You just, just, oh. Good boy, good boy. You see his fear reaction. It's quite strong on that side, not on this side so much. You can see him tensing up. Good boy. Good boy. Walk on. Good boy. Good boy. And you can see how far Ghost is from actually being able to fight in a battle yet. Even though he's a stallion, He's still quite nervous about things. Good boy. But he's relaxing. He's relaxing. You can see his ears. His ears show you what he's focused on. So when there's a noise, this is. Oh God. This is not making much noise. Nor is it shiny. So my armour is in a bag so that it's not the shininess as well. But, good boy, good boy. So I stop it, rub it on him, let him relax, and then get his attention again. Good boy, good boy. Praising him all the time, come on then, good boy. What I'm not doing, is facing him this way. This is a threat to a horse. My eyes look forwards, his eyes look sideways. If I'm looking at him, it's the sign of a predator and he's prey. So I'm keeping an eye on his face and his eyes. And when he's looking away, he's relaxing entirely. He's looking at other things. But now he's looking at this. Good boy. Get him to walk with me. Good boy, walk towards the threat. Good lad. He's relaxing a little bit. So from the time I was here to where I am now, he's already relaxed a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is try to see how Warlord behaves with simulated dead bodies. I have no idea whether they did this in medieval times, but it strikes me as an important component of training a war horse. So we're gonna have a go. I have no idea what he's gonna do, uh, but that's the whole point of training. You've got to react and see what the horse does. Good boy, come on, come on. Good boy. So you can see he's not particularly happy with it. Good boy, come on. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Shush, shush, shush. Good boy. Come on then. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Well, he's walking, he's walking round them. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Let's try you a bit faster. Right. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose, in some ways, he is trying to miss if he can. So that's interesting, it would make sense actually. You don't want to deliberately tread on people necessarily if they're dead, but he has trodden on limbs right in the middle of chests. Uh, so I reckon that's how you would have done it. 
train with dummies, get the horse used to it. The horse shouldn't try to tread on bodies unless I guess you could train it to do that. Broadly speaking, he seems to be okay in, what, a few minutes. Now, nobody's making a noise, there's no smell of blood, there's no armor on them, but this is the beginnings of the kind of training you would need to do, I think, to get war horses used to a battlefield. Good boy, well done, Warlord. Good boy, hey? Eh? I'm going to try mounting up and riding over the bodies now. I'm going to do a bit of training for myself as well. Two reasons for wearing this. One is I don't normally ride with a safety helmet on, but given the circumstances, I'm going to wear a safety helmet, but it's going to be a contemporary medieval safety helmet. So this sallet, I'm going to put this on. This will have the effect of training me as well, because it will train my neck muscles as I ride. And it's important that I don't just train Warlord, I train myself. And it keeps me a bit warmer as well. Good boy, right? And what I will do, I will try to get closer and closer. I'm not gonna throw him straight in at the deep end. I'm gonna get closer and closer and eventually, almost by accident, try and walk over one of the simulated corpses. Well, I'm just going to go for it, see what happens. Good boy. Good boy. Well, no problem at all. In fact, it's arguably easier when I'm on his back than when I'm leading him. He doesn't want to go at speed particularly. Can't blame him. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. That was surprisingly easy. I thought I'd have to take longer to get him used to the bodies on the ground. So it shows that in a fairly short space of time with a horse that's well trained in other ways, you'll be able to get him to deal with corpses just strewn across the battlefield. I think he'd cope. Also, with all the adrenaline going through him and me on a battlefield, I don't think corpses are getting in the way at all. In fact, the only thing that's dangerous about them is tripping up on them and them getting in the way and bringing you down. So you'd want to be careful. You don't want to deliberately go across corpses, but at the same time, I don't think a row of corpses would be in any way an impediment to the mounted knight on the medieval battlefield. You can see how a horse's natural reaction to danger is to back away. And then you've just got to let them relax, realize it's not a threat, and then they settle down. You will never take all of the prey animal from a horse. No matter how brave that horse is, there will always be something that will tip it over the edge. Hopefully, with the right kind of training, that won't affect you in battle itself. But you never know, and it is written in the chronicles that some horses, once they'd been in one battle, that was it. That horse was done, would never go into battle again. It's tragic to think of that, all that time and energy, but that horse's spirit for battle was potentially broken by one single encounter. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.